the executive would rather it operated without it being checked and that's why they've really reacted the way they have in our constitution I already anticipated all this it shares power among the branches and uh, therefore although it might appear to be a fight for superiority i don't particularly see it as such the past three months have been historic in malawi fundamentally so there have been three months of tossing of ideas and suggestions any visitor from outside coming at this time would be extremely impressed there has been a spectacular show of independence of our three arms of government the executive the judicature and indeed the legislature but the socio-political and economic dilemma around the zambia maize fiasco has exposed what hitherto may not have been thought in play what a visitor may at first value see as independence of the three arms could in fact be a display of indispensability by each of the three players try this for size not only does this order constitute a fundamental error in law but it also threatens the constitutional order on the separation of powers that was information minister nicholas dausi the law of this country is such that and the law of many civilized nations or democracies is such that a decision of the court no matter how one disagrees with no matter how bitter one is with it it ought to be followed to the letter the voice of malawi law society president john suzibanda and here's how a member of the special parliamentary committee reacted if the courts in malawi have seen and have given an injunction to allow the minister to stop working and then you as a ministry you still working with the minister are you also not in contact of court the official position pronounced by government immediately after the mzuzu high court minister's injunction brought to bear realities of the physical situation of the relations between the three arms on the ground relations between the executive the judicature and the legislature are not at the best they should at least from where we stand and observe they seem to be trying to outdo each other in terms of their relevance and constitutional superiority. We know best how Malawi laws work. We understand laws of Malawi best. We make supreme laws of Malawi. But let's see how law professor H. Kanyongolo explains the situation. Critical comments about judicial decisions in themselves are not wrong. It's a democracy. Even the judiciary must be held to account for its decision. What causes the problem is when those criticisms amount to the undermining of the authority of the judiciary. Now, if we undermine the authority of the judiciary, then essentially we are undermining the principle of the rule of law because the judiciary is the primary guardian, interpreter, and enforcer of these laws. So that's the effect that it could have. But I think we should avoid thinking that any criticism of a judicial decision poses a threat to the rule of law. The judiciary is an institution in a democracy it also must be held to account discussion on the relationship of the trio may not be authentic minus discussion on the existing political atmosphere where the ruling party heads the executive and the opposition dominates parliament the scenario puts the judicature in a precarious situation in that any decision made in favor of one school of political thought will easily be construed to mean the other school of political thought has goofed in a normal and functioning democracy the three are supposed to enrich each other not antagonize or engage in politically motivated animosity political analyst dr boniface dulani discusses the present scenario with focus on reactions after judge john chira ordered for the first time in this country that a cabinet minister should temporarily stop official duty in many ways as much as that what we've seen suggests that these three branches of government are in a tug of war in the actual fact actually we are seeing that true independence of the executive from the judiciary and the judiciary really accepting independence and autonomy from the executive and the legislature and at the same time the legislature also executing its own independence and playing really its oversight role by investigating a decision even if you think the reactions might give the impression that things are not moving in her recent social media opinion a senior and respected government lawyer dr janet banda bluntly disagrees with the ruling by judge chira 
but he in his latest order has said courts have jurisdiction over executive decisions. The judiciary may not react wildly owing to its nature of operations. It is a silent listener to perceptions, the behavior, conduct and utterance of the two other arms of the government. But the judiciary is, without doubt, an entity made up of individuals who have feelings and emotions. The effect of the executive or the legislature bedeviling the judiciary has potential to prick the negative reaction of some presiding court officers. But how are some citizens looking at the relations between the executive, judicature and legislature in light of how the three entities reacted to concerns on the controversial maize transaction with Zambia? We we'll first him head on, and the first question will be to ask in whose interest is government challenging this injunction because it has been sought by Malawians, representatives of Malawians, and if they are going to challenge it, which Malawian will they be representing? Because the majority of Malawians would want justice to prevail on this matter. What is important, I think, as I'm looking at this, as I'm clearly following as a citizen, is what do we really make of all of this? And I'm looking forward to a time everything will be concluded so that we see what happens next and what does it all mean for our national integrity. Therefore, any tug of war between the three arms of our government should ideally be to the benefit of the citizens of this country. Anything short of this is, in fact, an unnecessary display of overzealous bravado. The losers would be the very people the system was designed to serve. The fact that uh, the judiciary is reviewing executive decisions, the fact that parliamentary committees are exercising oversight over the executive, say this is the normal operation of checks and balances. Some individuals, yes, in those branches may be unhappy and may personally feel stressed, but let's not confuse that with the straining of institutional relations. The executive would rather it operated without it being checked, and that's why they've you know, reacted the way they have, including going into court to challenge, I think, the decision by Justice Kiwa. At the same time, I think the legislature also is trying to express its own mandate. Not only does this order constitute a fundamental error in law, but it also threatens the constitutional order on the separation of powers.